So hello all, we are Tamas and Klaus from ITEMIS and our talk today is about uh, Franca and Internet of Things. So we were desperately looking for some showcase which uh, connects both and we found this robot arm and you can think of uh, uh, some production control, some factory where we have this machine and we are controlling it and we will put all the aspects together. So some parts from automotive, some web uh, UI parts and, and Internet of Things. Okay, this is the overview uh, of the talk. So we have uh, a little introduction to Franca. Some of you may know it already. And then we are covering the application domains, automotive, web, and then Internet of Things. And then we put all together uh, for controlling this machine. So well, let's start with the Franca overview first. So Franca is a tool for uh, defining software interfaces and transforming them and generating code out of software interfaces. Um, it has been designed to do system integration for, for large and complex systems where you have uh, large subsystems from various suppliers and have to put them together, have to crawl, uh, control this process. Um, Franca is, is running on the Eclipse platform, is built on top of uh, Xtext, Xtent. Uh, it's open source, it's hosted on Eclipse Labs, which is Google Code, actually. And uh, quite about a year ago, we proposed it as an Eclipse project, but we are still stalled because my former employer has to check if the trademark can be given to Eclipse Foundation. Um, and the funny thing is currently, so th they made some progress there, but currently they, they are checking my former contract. Maybe I'm the owner of the trademark. So. <laughs> So it's a recursive thing somehow, yeah. But th their legal department is quite slow, so we maybe have to wait a little while more. So this is the history of Franca. It all started in, in mid of 2011 in the Geneva uh, Consortium. So about 150 companies throughout the world have joined to build a common platform for infotainment systems for cars. And this is what Geneva does. It's kind of AutoSAR for navigation systems. And they are trying to build this platform uh, completely open source because this platform contains all the stuff, the, the suppliers of those systems. Yeah, this is not the, their key, their core know-how. So they're building applications on top of this. And in, in 2011, they recognized that it's not enough to simply put components together and then somehow magic and architecture will happen. Uh, so they. They were thinking about introducing some modeling for, for a system architecture. And the first thing they could do, the, the least common denominator, was uh, to define an interface description language. And this is where I joined this work. And uh, we, we were looking at various IDLs on the market. So there are many. But the actual problem was not to, to choose an IDL, but to be able to transform all the different formats of the suppliers and the car manufacturers uh, one into the other. And yeah, we, we started with a big Excel sheet, but this was, uh, yeah, didn't lead to some progress. So what we did at that time was to implement a tool which, which can be used to transform interfaces from UML to proprietary to CORBA, connect all these different uh, ways. And this was the starting point of Franca. And in November 2011, there was the initial release, and half a year later, we uh, published this as an open source um, product on Eclipse Labs. One year later, in 2013, there was a big milestone. There is a, a, a different project, which is called Common API uh, C++, which is a, basically a code generator out of Franca interfaces for C++ code. Uh, the, the special thing here is that it's actually two code generators. One generates the API, which can be stable, and one generates the glue code for some network stack. And, and then if you have several hundred software components, you don't have to touch them when you exchange the network stack, which is quite common because if a supplier builds a system for BMW and then switches to Daimler, then he had, they are using a completely different architecture below. Yeah, and, okay, and in November 2013, we made this project proposal. These are the five feature areas of Franca. So in the upper left, you see 
It's an uh, interface description language built with Xtext, quite common. Then uh, there is a framework for building generators and transformations. There are also some transformations included. For example, Linux Dbus is, a, uh, is included. Uh, and which is a feature which is very important is to specify the dynamic behavior of interfaces. So what you can do here is define protocol state machines which define the order of events between client and server. And this is especially important if you have large systems because during this integration uh, of the subsystems, you need to know what the order of events is. It, uh, it's not enough to have some Word document about this. The other two feature areas we won't talk about today. Okay, this is a simple example of a Franca interface. It uses a Java-like package concept. You can define interfaces which have attributes, methods, and also broadcasts, which is server-initiated communication, which is quite important in that technical application space because an incoming call, for example, will inject an event from the bottom of your layered architecture and then needs to show up in the UI. We will look at some interfaces more in the demo. So let's switch to the first application area. I already told you about infotainment systems. Um, so for example, a, a supplier builds this kind of system and gets a navigation from a Japanese company because the Japanese want a very special kind of navigation in their cars. And then you have 200 interfaces they have to match. And the problem is you need to support the full development cycle for, for doing this. And one important thing is to avoid this integration nightmares. And you can switch to the next slide. And you may heard about this kind of events, plug fests, or in the Bluetooth case, it's called unplug fest, where many developers of different companies meet, usually in a nice spot in Hawaii or somewhere. Um, and they pair in some hotel room here, and everybody brings his device, and they check if they work together, for example, with Bluetooth or with other, so every networking interface standard has its plug fest twice a year or once a year. And stop, uh, why do they do this? Because they, they have a, a written specification of the allowed order of events. And they have to check if the, the order of events and also the timings work together between the different devices. Because there are Bluetooth profiles, so everybody knows how to do this, but there are little tweaks and details which usually introduce the errors. And there, Everybody has to pair with anybody and they have to test their devices. Okay. And this is why we uh, are looking at this specification of event orders and, and protocol state machines. In the Genevi space, there is this kind of tool which is uh, running on your laptop and you connect it to the actual hardware and you see all the tracing from the hardware uh, at the laptop and then the developer has to check this and find the bugs in here and there might be many messages in here. And so um, what we did was, switch to next slide please. Um, we want to establish a, a validator for these uh, interface contracts in a real development scenario. So we built a plugin for this DLT viewer to do the validation automatically. We can switch to the next. So this is the, the architecture of this example. So on the target side, there's the actual application and sends the traces to a daemon. The daemon collects all the traces and sends them to the DLT viewer on the host side. And we build a plugin which filters, which extracts all the, the events from interfaces in the target application and checks them, validates them against the contract of the interface. Can switch to the next. This is an example for this uh, kind of protocol state machine for this robot arm application. So initially the interface is in an initial state and now the client could send move events to move it around. The server has to respond. So you see an event across the interface from client to server or back will trigger a transition uh, progress here. And so it can move as long as it wants and then it can send a grab command, then it will grab something and release it again. And then it can move with a grabbed, uh, no, not release it, but send the response that it has grabbed it. And so this defines the order of events on the interface. Now you can. 
And this is the screenshot of our plugin, which we built with the validation algorithm. So it will read the, all the traces and will uh, put them into separate contexts for each interface. And then, for example, for the second interface, we can see here the client has called the grab method. And then, without waiting for the response of the grab method, called the release method. And this violates the contract. And now in the tool which the developer uses, he can see the actual problems right when they occur. And the benefits of this is clear. So you can automatically check the running system without increasing footprint. Um, the developer gains confidence and the software quality rises. Now this helps a lot during this integration scenarios. And what, what is also important, um, they are doing field tests long-term field tests and collecting traces and then this can be done also on a server uh, as a batch process checking all the, the traces against the contracts and then they will get a report on what happened in their in their tests so this is how how franca with this protocol state machines can help for system integration in the automotive space and also in other domains so now we switch to the web application uh, domain so here we have a, a, a different scenario. So we want to build applications which run in the browser with HTML5 and JavaScript. And this should communicate via some inter-process communication to some application. Yeah. And um, what we want to do now is to use the Franca interface to generate the bindings for the connection between the two layers. So that you don't have to uh, cope with this JavaScript stuff to communicate with some other process which is implemented in C++ maybe. So it, it will get complicated in practice and so uh, we are providing some code generators for doing this. And the client usually uses these technologies uh, and the server can use various technologies so like Node.js and JavaScript or common API which I mentioned before and C++ code. So there are various possibilities here. So in, in our uh, implementation of, for this, we're using two standards, which is WebSockets, which allows to communicate from the browser uh, UI into s some other process. And this is very low level, and so we, we are using this WAMP sub-protocol too, which allows uh, higher level patterns like remote uh, procedure call, publish, subscribe, and so on. And so our code generator will generate code against the WAMP interface. And this is the resulting stack. So client side, which runs in the browser, we have a UI with JavaScript. This is generated from the Franca interface, a proxy class. And then we're using the network stack here, this WAMP stack. On the server side, it's similar, also with a generated stub layer. OK, go ahead. Um, OK, this is uh, a demo example. So the server is not running at the moment. OK, so, so this is an a, a HTML5 JavaScript UI, which actually com uh, communicates with the server, but the server is not running because we have another server for the robot arm currently. Yeah. And yeah, here you can see, so the server is also available on GitHub and yeah, to, to test all the communication in the generator. Yeah, we try. Now reload the browser and now you can see uh, it communicates. You could also use the multimedia system if you're online. My um, problem with this Wi-Fi connection is not the best for uh, this. Try again with the silence. <laughs> <laughs> silence works all the time. <laughs> no, it's so. Ah, okay. So this is a little infotainment system of a car right here in the presentation. Yeah. Maybe techno is a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So this is what what happens behind the scenes. So we have the Franca interface here. For example, the play music method, which is called when you press the button in the UI. And this is the implementation, client-side JavaScript implementation. And it uses this proxy class, which is generated out of the Franca interface. 
And then it's quite easy. So for example, if the server sends a changed clock event, then you add some line of JavaScript here and can update the HTML element. Okay, so go ahead. So the benefits for this domain is you, you can have reusable interface definitions which are between the UI running in JavaScript and so on and some server side. Um, the APIs can be, uh, will be easy to use because you just write the Franca interface, generate the code, it's quite usual. And for the infotainment example, it's, there are also other uh, user interfaces. There's not only touch screen and this joystick-like device in the middle, uh, but you also have speech UI and also gestures and head-up displays. And then the one server could support multiple UIs in this setup. Um, yeah, the server implementation can be flexible, can be C++, JavaScript, and so on. And also here the contracts could be used to check the, the interaction between UI and server. Okay, and now we will switch to the Internet of Things part. Tamash will take over. I do not really want to say a lot of things about Internet of Things because probably you are now bored of all of this. So, but just a few words. So here the basic idea would be to just connect all the different kinds of devices together through some kind of a network. And so here we are not talking about laptops or mobile devices. We are talking about this robot or, for example, this mousetrap that you heard yesterday on the keynote. So the basic idea would be to not just to connect these devices, but also to create some intelligent application on top of all this. And the demo will be about this browser-based HTML5 UI. And from this UI, basically, we try to control this robot arm with some simple movements. And uh, in order to do that, we are using this MQTT message broker. This stands for the Message Queue Telemetry Transport. And this is a broker, and right now we are using this publish subscribed uh, subscribe uh, functionality but it also provides this remote procedure call and there are many other functionality available uh, it is lightweight actually it's designed to be used in constrained environment where for example the bandwidth limit is limited and uh, it provides various uh, quality of service so for example messaging service at least once at most once exactly once and so on and uh, so the implementation that we will use for this MQTT broker is the Mosquito. And I will show that in the demo. Um, it's an interesting thing to mention that the, the Eclipse PAHO project it can be nicely used for these kind of uh, solutions because basically it provides client implementations. Basically it's a library, source code library, uh, which you can use to connect to in the Internet of Things domain with various languages, Java, JavaScript, C, C++, and so on. And so we have approached this uh, the demo, and in order to actually show that, so here I have a few words about this demo, what you will see here. So I told you that we have this device uh, in the Internet of Things domain, this is the robot arm in our case. And the way how we control this is basically with MQTT topics. So we will send messages whenever we want the robot arm to, to do something. And then we have this HTML5 UI, which I will show you later. And this defines some lower level controls, basically just to modify the XYZ coordinates of the top of the robot arm. And there will be some higher level movements, basically just to pack these cubes from left to right or right to left. And all these things, basically we define these movements in a Franca interface, I will show you soon. And basically the JavaScript code that is responsible for the communication between the web parts, those are generated by Franca. And here you can see an overview of this architecture. So basically here on the lower left, this is the robot arm device. Very, right now all of these things are running on my computer, except the robot arm. But these boxes, basically these could be distributed into separate boxes or separate computers. So the idea is that I have a browser. This could be, for example, a smart home, uh, smartphone. Then we have this, basically the server side for the web application. Uh, this is right now in our case Node.js. Then we have the MQTT server. This is running also on my computer, but this could be somewhere else. And then we have the robot arm client, basically which controls the robot arm. And this is a Java application in our case. Okay, and so the demo. Um, 
in order to actually see what's going on here, so I first of all need to start the Mosquito. This is what I mentioned, the MQTT broker in our case. Um, then I have a bunch of applications. So first of all, I will start the Java application to control the robot arm. So that's, in our case, it's basically a simple OSGI application. For the sake of the demo, I will just start it from Eclipse. So now the robot arm actually got a signal that it should go to the starting position. So from here on, we can actually control it. Then I need to start the node application for the server side of this web application. So that's just simply starting the node application. And then I have this UI here, which is, I will just zoom in a little bit. So this is a really simple UI. Here you can see some lower level controls. Basically we have translated the X, Y, Z coordinates to forward, backward, left, right, and so on. And then we have some other movements here, angle of attack, which basically just, uh, so the, the standard point for the robot arm is basically this point here between this gripper. That's the, where the angle of attack is calculated from. Then we can rotate this uh, robot arm. We can increase the grab and decrease it. So what is the width between the two arms? And yeah, for example, we can move the robot arm left to right, and there is this move button, and then actually it moves. There is this save button here, which I will use in the end. This just uh, drives the robot arm back to the safe position. And so when I press these buttons, basically we will send a message to an MQTT topic. When I modify these text fields, then basically nothing will happen right until the point when I press this move button, because then three messages will be sent to three topics, the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Okay, so and probably the more interesting part is this one. So this basically uh, shows you the initial setup of these cubes. And so we have four on the left and zero on the right, and then the robot arm is able to move, yeah, right now two cubes in, in once <laughs> okay. from left to right. It's better to tweak it a little bit. Yeah, actually, it has some problems with the battery. It eats it all the time. And then right now it, we, it needed some calibration, so that's why I tried to grab two cubes at the same time initially. And we have created these, these, these are the higher level controls. And I would like to show you the Franca interfaces for these things. So basically this is uh, an X-Text language. Uh, so basically we have defined this in these fiddle files. These, these are defined by Franca. And so here is the interface for the lower level control. This is similar to what Klaus has showed you. So here we have some attributes, X, Y, Z, angle of attack, rotation. And then we have two methods, basically move and yeah, and there is three methods, so this reset method is the one which sends the robot arm back to the safe position. Then we have this other interface, which is pretty sim uh, simple also. This is basically for this cube packing. So we have, uh, we are counting how many cubes are on the left, how many on the right, and then we have two operations, move left and move right. And so there are generators available in Franca. Basically, in this case, we are generating JavaScript code, which is responsible for the communication between the browser and the JavaScript server side. And right now, we do not have generators for the MQTT connection, so how this uh, connection is established and how it is uh, actually functioning. But we are planning to provide also generators for this, so that actually you will have some stops for this communication between MQTT uh, devices and MQTT parts of your system. Okay, so now I will just uh, give it back to Klaus because he has some final thoughts. <coughs> okay, so what, what are the overall benefits of this approach? Um, you can design the interfaces first, which define the application logic for this example. And this can be done independently of the implementation. Um, part of the implementation can be generated. Currently, the, the communication between the browser part and the uh, JavaScript server side, we could integrate the various components easily. So when we met after preparing our subsystems, we, we could put it together in maybe one hour to, to get the whole example running. And we will also uh, 
be able to add contracts to the interfaces to check if the communication between the various distributed parts of this IoT system uh, is valid you know, or if there are any flaws in this. What we plan to do is to add more devices for this example. For example, uh, there is a force sensor which can be put into the gripper and then we can even grab eggs maybe. Yeah. We will try it once. Um, we will add contracts. Uh, I showed you this DLT tool to check uh, the, the contracts on the fly and so we will add contracts and, and also add this to the showcase. And like Tamas mentioned, we will uh, also add a generator for generating MQTT topics and the interaction with these topics from a front end interface. Okay, thanks for your attention. I think we can switch over to the Q&A. Safe position. Which, which wire? <laughs> um, like yeah. Through WebSockets. Basically, we are using the WAMP protocol there. So, uh, basically, that's uh, it is serialized to JSON, okay. but uh, we are using the WAMP protocol to actually make sense what is on the wire. So, from this data. So, basically, we have an open source implementation of this WAMP protocol, and our server uses this implementation for the communication with the clients. Okay, so thanks again.